I just want to take a beat and just sit on this for a moment, Claudia. Let's go from the very beginning. Tell us what the psalm rule is, what you wanted it to be used for, and whether you think it's applicable in a labour market like this one. So the origin of the recession indicator was in a proposal I had to improve fiscal policy, put it on autopilot, automatic stabilizers in a recession. It's a rule in the sense of not the economy must do something. It was a rule in the sense of policymakers do something. It may end up uh, playing out that way. So, but what the idea of it was, was to look at the historical record in the United States and find the pattern, find the unemployment rate increase. It's very important to look at changes at which in the past, the US has been in a recession, months into a recession. This is not a forecast, right? And so it, it's just trying to capture, and yet it is absolutely true that it doesn't have to be that way this time. And frankly, if we look at all of what we know about the US economy, right now, it is very unlikely that we are in a recession. And yet a really important question is where are we headed? And this, those changes in the unemployment rate that the SOMRO picks up on, they do not look encouraging, right? They're headed in the wrong direction. And that momentum is what can get us in trouble. So Claudia, for just all of those people out there, who are talking about your name, who are talking about the SOM rule, using as an excuse to sell, using as an excuse to say that the Fed should be moving sooner. Just, just what do you say to those people? Calm is important in a moment like this, regardless of what indicator or data point you're looking at. You know, the, the fear does no good. And this, again, this was trying to give a simple summary of one piece of the, the U.S. economy. The labor market is very important. There's a lot of complications right now. And yet it's this balance between the calm, but take it seriously, Right, like there is slowing in the U.S. economy, and we have seen that. The point is, is to keep that slowing from really pulling us in reverse. We're not there yet. Usually, in the song rule, by the time it triggers, we're past that point. Right, so there is this opportunity of, as I said, the Federal Reserve has a lot of uh, place to ease. There is, we do come into this in a position of strength, broadly speaking, in the economy. So that that's really important for weathering a storm like this that has many different contributors to it today. I didn't mean to use your pun as a segue, but I want to in terms of storm and weathering it, because on Friday there was just this huge debate when the numbers dropped of people saying, look, don't believe the numbers you're going to see because they will revert quickly because a lot of it has to do with weather. A lot of it has to do with hurricane barrel. But by the way, the BLS comes out and says there's no discernible impact. Which side of this do you fall on, Claudia? Whether the numbers we saw on Friday are something that can somewhat reverse because it's a weather impact. It's absolutely the case that any indicator, and the SOM rule fits into this, should not be designed to overreact to one month of data, right? So the SOM rule looks, it smooths across months. The pattern it's responding to is a gradual increase, gradual steady increase in unemployment over the past year, okay? So there's that. In terms of weather effects, I, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has the ability and the experience to look very carefully at the geographic data to get a sense of where its effects are. I think they take those uh, statements very seriously, and I agree with them for a lot of reasons, including their statement, that the unemployment rate, specifically the summer was on, was not affected. The labor force status was not affected. Being home because, being unable to work because of the weather doesn't flip you out of being employed to unemployed. So it gets really technical in that, but absolutely, that one month, that was a big surprise. It was a negative one, a prior of just some of that reverse is probably the right one. But it is the context of the year as a whole. And even moderate slowing and this increase in the unemployment rate has been in the past consistent with early in recession. So we might not be there, but we're getting uncomfortably close to that situation. Claudia, you've worked at the Federal Reserve. You know better than most how that institution operates, how slowly it can move sometimes. How do you think it's going to respond to this data? Not just on Friday, but the data from Thursday as well, as we go into Jackson Hole. On a day like today when, as you said, the, the panic word is looming large for many people, the fact that the Federal Reserve is slow moving and deliberate, it's a good thing. 
right? The last thing we need is them joining into that uh, that kind of emo that energy, that emotional energy. And yet they're watching it very carefully. The you know market functioning, liquidity. These are all you know the reason that we have the Fed is to make sure the markets keep functioning. Monetary policy then came later, right? So there is this aspect of them being diligent in terms of them looking at Friday's report and changing dramatically their views on a September rate change, I think that's that would be unlike them. And I think it would be premature, right? They're pointed in the right direction. They have some time to get there. Uh, but yes, they are, they are slow moving, particularly when it comes to the economic data. How do you imagine they'll frame that first interest rate cut? Do you think that's going to be framed as a mid-cycle adjustment? the process towards sort of normalization or the first step towards taking a more accommodative stance, given what's developing? How do you think they're going to frame it, just given what we know so far? Goodness, September feels like a lifetime away right now. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, they, if they can, the Fed likes to move in on the path it set out, the path it has set out is to begin uh, normalizing interest rates because inflation is normalized and we are in, you know, Kind of everything is pointed in that right direction. I think they're going to want to keep to that narrative and to that uh, path if they can. You know, the last few days have called into question whether that is appropriate, will be appropriate at that point. And I will say one thing for the Fed, you know, it is it is very deliberate. It can be very slow moving. But when when the facts change and it, it gets its mind around it, it will move and it will do what it has to do. And we are in a position right now where they have the ability to do quite a bit, and that is notable. And, and John made the point that both Citi and J.P. Morgan have changed their call now to see two consecutive 50 basis point cuts from the Fed. Claudia, what, what difference does it actually make moving 25 or 50 in September? It, it will all it, it all fits within the context of that moment, right? If, if for someone changing to fifty point cuts, particularly consecutive ones, that's that's a pretty dire uh, outlook for the economy when we get to to that point or you know in the intervening. Uh, that's not that's not where my baseline is. I don't think that's where the Fed's is. I mean, looking at the data and where we're at, and yet. You know, it, clearly, if we were seeing large moves like that out of the gate, we, there's there's a real problem. But, you know, but we saw some big moves out of the gate in fighting inflation in 2022 in the other direction. And, you know, you, you the Fed will take its policy to where it needs to be to the, the conditions in the economy.